Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today on this stage because I've done some things a musician normally wouldn't do. I flew 30 meters high over a crowd of thousands of people in Brazil, playing the piano, playing music by Handel. I also drove here in Amsterdam over cobbled stones, uh, playing on the piano, towed by a car, and also playing Handel. Let's watch some clips. This was really fun to do. It was an amazing experience, magical for hundreds of different of reasons. But the big question I logically started to ask myself was, why on earth would I do such a thing? Why would I kind of risk my life dangling on a bungee cord? And why would I go over cobbled stones in Amsterdam and actually the moment we hit a bridge, I lost all control over the keyboard? Well, my answer is, that I really very badly want to share this music. I want to share it with everybody who is willing to hear it. And that is because I fell in love with this music. It happened two years ago. I was sitting on my couch here in Amsterdam, and I had the flu, and I was browsing on the internet a little. Handel caught my eye, and I was looking in him up, and I found out that he had written pieces for the keyboard I had never heard before. And this is quite odd. I had never heard it on CD before, or on the radio, or heard it live. So I downloaded this sheet music, put it on my piano stand, and started playing it through. And what happened next was something I can only describe as my personal state of wonder. It, it, it hit a really deep chord within me. And let me illustrate. The first piece I played through was this. on and I could describe this for me it felt like it was beautiful melancholy really beautiful melancholy without dwelling in total sorrow I finished the piece I flipped the page and the next thing I played was this
completely different, isn't it? A total contrast. <laughs> Thank you. It was an absolute contrasting piece to the first. So what happened there in my room here in Amsterdam was that within three minutes, I experienced what I would say are two vital human expressions, melancholy and pure, vibrant energy. So that's how I got addicted to this music. I give a lot of children's concerts in Holland, and sometimes I get classes of seven and eight-year-olds, uh, and anything I put in front of them, whether it is Bach, Beethoven, Schumann, or some jazz, they're really open to it. They always listen, and I feel I can reach them. It, it, it is as if they are in a constant state of wonder. And sometimes I get classes where they're just a few years older, and I don't know exactly what's happened. And I, I, I am not sure if I reached them, actually, because is it peer pressure, you know, friends telling you what you should like, or is it the media telling you what you're supposed to like? Uh, but I sometimes get already a critical glance, and I'm not sure if they really liked it. And I remember it from my own youth. It's such a shame that growing up, that seems to kind of vanish. I also remember when I was eight, I listened wholeheartedly to music that I'd never heard before, and I would run to my mom and dad saying, oh, you have to listen to this. So I experience now that the positive thing of growing up is that I don't only have to run to my mom and dad saying, listen to this, but I create the possibility to share it with a wider audience. And I think that's how I ended up 30 meters high. All these realizations that I seemingly had lost this state of wonder for a while, until I heard Handel, made me really curious about other people. And especially for this TEDx event today, I went with my friends outside here in front of the building two weeks ago and tried a little experiment. Let's look at it. Ready? Yeah. Honest opinion. Honest. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you an image. <laughs> the first thing I thought about was, was horses. Horses? Yeah. I, I had an image of horses and well trained horses as well. It's a bit too cold for the music right now. I think yeah. it, it should be a little bit warmer with sunshine and a glass of white wine and uh, things like that. Yeah. I like to be at home and doing things. Doing things? Yeah. During, during this music. Why doing things? Because it brings you into a rhythm where you can see and do more than you would without the music. I think it's a very serene type of music, uh, the type of music you really need to sit down for and listen to. And it's maybe not even the type of music you would listen to at work because it requires actual attention. You're working out with it? Did you yeah, I do. Yeah, I love it. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with the loud classical music, it's really, really nice. Great. Always do that. <laughs> nice. I don't like classical music. It, it, no. I don't have a, a feeling about it. Nothing. No, no feeling, no, no whatsoever. <laughs> it's very, very nice. It's optimist, happy. It reminds me to my father because my father also played the clave. How do you say clave in English? I don't know. I don't know. That instrument, like a piano, but for church. Yeah, in English. It's very, very nice. It made me 
feel like I, I want to hear it by him. Great. Okay? Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Well, the funny part is that I was hoping for any reaction at all. It was actually quite scary to do this. And I ended up with so many different reactions, so many diverse reactions. And I, it really made me happy, because if you get to one and the, well, so many different responses to one and the same piece, to me that feels like, OK, then it's really great music. I cannot tell these people's minds, of course, but I really started like stretching my boundaries as a musician to see if I can get to people unexpectedly. Because for me, the most beautiful moment in performance art is when I can convey my state of wonder at exactly the same moment that you are open to hear it, that you are listening without prejudice. So I thought about it, let's make a deal. Uh, you'll pretend to be seven for a while, uh, while I'll conclude this talk by playing, and of course it's going to be Handel. <laughs> 